bring up the subject of translations. The side that I have poked many holes through, they will start arguing about this verse as a last resort. Acts chapter 12, verse 4, And when he, they're speaking of King Herod, had apprehended him, they're speaking of Peter, he put Peter in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Now many claim that this is a mistranslation. In fact, all of the new translations that you'll find in certain bookstores, they say the word Passover. Here's the Amplified saying Passover. Here's the New American Standard say Passover. I could run through every one of the new translations and show you they say Passover, but it would take too long because they all do. So which is it? Should it be Easter or Passover? Now, Tyndale's translation says Easter. And he, he had a really good translation going there. If only he would have been able and allowed to finish it, the Catholics caught him and burned him. Uh, him and his copies that he had made. Later on, Miles Coverdale would, would take over where Tyndale left off. and His version has Easter. The King James Version has Easter. But the newer versions, well, they have Passover. The New American Standard, NIV, New Living, the Revised, the Amplified, Good News Bible, Message, English Standard, American Standard, you name it. Now, both of them are translating this one word, Pascha. That's the Greek word. Pascha is used in the Bible 29 times. 28 times in the authorized King James, it gets translated as Passover. Except in Acts 12.4. Now, if I were on the other side, I would use this against my side. And I'm just being honest. That, that doesn't look too good for us. I would definitely harp on this and bring it up and use it. And, of course, they do. Well, let's define the term Easter. Now, don't worry. I'm not going to say anything about bunny rabbits or colored eggs. That's a subject that could go on for days. Easter, though, is basically one of the many pagan festivals that celebrate the moon goddess, queen of heaven worship, that was running rampant. You probably recognize many of those names. As you can see, there's various forms of the, the spelling and different dialects. Istra, Ashtoreth, Ishtar, Isis, Ashtart. And Ashtoreth shows up in the Bible a lot. Easter is basically the queen of heaven. This is paganism. Now, I'm going to highlight the word Ashtoreth there to show you how it shows up in the uh, Old Testament. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians. Also, you see Queen of Heaven get mentioned a few times. Jeremiah chapter 44, the Queen of Heaven, Queen of Heaven, Queen of Heaven. And they were worshiping her. And then in Ezekiel, I have the word Tammuz show up. Now, Tammuz, you may not re really recognize. You're probably more familiar with the term Horus. This would be the son of Isis. So it, it's all Queen of Heaven and her son, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Diana makes a makes a reference in the book of Acts. So, but, should the word Easter be translated Pascha? Should Pascha be translated as Easter? Is the word Passover the correct word here? Well, let's look at the context. That always helps. Now, about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. Wow. That's our detail. That's what we needed to know. 
Peter is arrested during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Now, when does that happen? When does that take place? Well, Leviticus chapter 23, in the 14th day of the first month, by the way, their first month is our month of April, okay? In the 14th day of the first month at even, okay, that's, well, you know what even means. That's the Lord's Passover. And on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Seven days ye must eat unleavened bread. Okay, we'll get a calendar here. Here's April. Uh, not necessarily this year. I just grabbed this off the internet. Now the 14th day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. Okay, there it is. There's the Passover right there. And on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And that's going to last for seven days. Okay, so you got the 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th, 21. That seven-day period is the Feast of the Unleavened Bread. So on one of those days after the Passover is when Peter gets arrested. Now, think about it. The Passover was one day. Did uh, did the second-born children die on, on, you know, day two? Did the angel of death come back day three, killing the third-born, fourth-born? Let's see, you got the Passover and then this whole extra week. No. No, you'd have to be the ninth child to survive that. My goodness. Numbers 28, and in the 14th day of the first month is the Passover of the Lord. This is making itself very clear. Now, some people go, oh, why does the Bible repeat itself? Maybe sometimes because it knows people are going to start questioning things. So God repeats himself. The 14th day, that's that's the Passover. And in the 15th day of this month is the feast. The seven days shall you have unleavened bread. Well, okay, that's the way I read it too. On the 14th is the Passover, and then you got the feast of unleavened bread. Numbers 33, and they departed from Ramses in the first month. On the 15th day of the first month, which is the morrow after the Passover. If you get to the 15th day, you are now after the Passover. I like it when the Bible is real clear like that. And I like it even better when I can find it in the Bible twice. Joshua chapter 5, and the children of Israel encamped in Gilgal and kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month at even in the plains of Jericho. And they did eat of the old corn of the land on the morrow after the Passover. I just love that. Deuteronomy 16. But at the place which the Lord thy God shall choose to place his name in there, thou shalt sacrifice the Passover at even. Well, boy, there's that word even again. I wonder if we can define that word. What is even? Is that that like evening? Oh, next word. At the going down of the sun. Imagine him saying that real slow to you so that you catch it. That's the Passover. Yep, that's exactly the way I see it, too. Uh, now, uh-oh, here's a question you might have to be asked. Does Passover always happen during the first month? That's a fair question. Let's see. Maybe there's a hole in this theory we have. Second Chronicles chapter 30. Then they killed the Passover on the 14th day of the uh-oh, second month. Wow. Let's see. Boy, I don't know how we're going to get out of this mess. Now, Second Chronicles 30. This was going to go. This was going to happen about 765 years after that first Passover. Something may have gone wrong between then and this period. Well, now let's look at that calendar again. You know, the Passover is going to start coming up around the 14th. Let's say on the 12th couple of days before 
you, let's say you start to have a cold sore, maybe around your mouth or lip or whatever. And maybe people that see you with that, maybe they get very concerned. And they think you might have some form of leprosy. Now, the custom back then would, would be to lock you away, lock you up for about seven days, and then check you at the end of that seven days to see if it's gotten worse, or was it just a sore? You know, they wanted to be very careful. Well, if that should happen,